British designers now. Almost like jacks all trade, like do a bit of everything. During a pandemic, a lot of brands have still been able to like pull the rabbit out of the hat. This year, everything has been stripped back. It kind of feels like a weird nightmare. Right now, it's pretty brutal. Young designers have to fend for themselves. It's quite a strange moment. We could potentially see a new generation of young designers who have really had to rethink what it means to create fashion. It's because there's a pandemic, I'm not going to stop working. We can't live without creativity. People still want to look good. The whole world can change in a second. You know, you just never know what is going to happen. We're here now, so <laughs> we made it. <laughs> I don't think that anyone could have predicted that the world would change so much and how we would dress would change and what we looked for in clothes would change and the fact that we have to wear face masks all the time. We were just kind of really terrified of the unknown because it was just a whole new thing that we were all sort of experiencing. We were forced to adapt in quite a few ways. I think number one was cancellation of our show in June. To lose that was really hard, both emotionally, but also within structuring the business. You know, we were going into lockdowns across the UK. There was all this like logistical stuff that was happening on top of, you know, maybe the person that pays your invoice uh, is sick or has a family member who's sick or is in quarantine or what have you and your invoices don't get paid. So, you know, there was this, this huge knock-on effect. I kind of went into planning mode. We had promises in place, you know, like um, the clothes have to go to the shop still. I refused to just let myself end uh, because of COVID. I wanted to keep going. With recent graduates, I think that there's actually more space, um, or there's more potential to grow in a way that you want to than there ever has been before. So I studied at CSM where I did my MA. I was able to uh, do the MA because uh, I got uh, an Isabella Blow scholarship. It gave me the opportunity to uh, develop my work as a designer. In March, we were just finishing our MA collections. Lockdown was announced. It was basically a bit of a like anticlimax. So you just finished the MA, everything's been really busy, and then uh, you go into like a, a black void, really. I was definitely scared, but I think I've been in scarier situations. Career-wise, you know, you, you do feel a bit lost, but there's a way of working around that. There was a lot of fundings like LVMH, things like that. They couldn't continue to give out funding and stuff. It's more about how you take on challenges. What do you do when something challenges you? Uh, your vision should always be there, whether you're in a pandemic or not as long as you know uh, what you stand for as a designer and, most importantly, what you stand for as a person. So March wasn't a great time before pandemic. And, and I think it's really important to remember that because I think it's so easy to kind of then get into a thing of like, oh, you know, we're suffering through pandemic, but everything will be okay afterwards because it wasn't okay before. I think more and more designers are, are kind of realising that they, they can take power into their own hands. I basically moved out of a studio like the week before the announcement that it was going to be locked down during March. I had to take like machines home. One of the machines broke, so it was kind of an expensive cost. <laughs> Because we're still in the pandemic, I still have to think of other ways I'm going to present myself and present the brand. So this is a film that I did for Spring Summer 21. I mostly had to think about how to create a film that still made people think or like feel something. When I was originally doing things about masculinity and like black masculinity and that sort of stuff, there's like different ways to show it. Things can be discussed very seriously, but then it's also a way of like celebrating it in a way that people feel that they're empowered. 
I'm actually most excited about my next season. The excitement of not knowing it all at the same time is like the best part of like creating an idea. I think because we don't know what's going to happen is that I'm just preparing for making designs that people are moved by. For those that do manage to work out a way to do it, they're then dealing with climate crisis and, and they're dealing with what it means to study an industry um, that has historically ignored climate crisis or, or, or contributed to climate crisis. And what does it mean to be study that industry and have that industry deified, but then want to then do nothing like that industry in their, in their own practices. For young designers, they were all dealing with these issues before pandemic struck. We're at our new studio. On the mountain of boxes. We still need to kind of unpack everything. I don't know what's going to be inside it. When lockdown happened, our studio was in London College of Fashion, Mare Street. So they kind of called us and were like, right, like we're going to lock down the building and it's going to have to close. We don't know when it's going to reopen. So we had to like take our machines like home and just get a van and just get as much as we could. So it was like, it was quite scary. Each collection will be like themed around kind of like what research we do into kind of like an area that has a problem within the UK. And then we work with a charitable project to kind of like tell their story. We're quite small, so we're agile and easily to move with change. Whereas if you're like a lot larger, it's really difficult to implement those changes. This year has been such a shake up, which I really, really feel like the fashion industry really needed. I feel like my brand's always been about the community and fashion's like a good way of bringing people together. So how's it been this year? Even in a place like London where like we're constantly being like played with and kind of divided against each other, we still manage to find like this like middle. And I think that that's quite important for like that place to still exist. I just, <laughs> this, you're onto something and it's like, it's cold. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> lemonade's not for kids. Disco play in the mix. Who got kicked out of where? Every skin's still a brick. Left the ends caught a bus. Caught below or above. Youths here didn't move. And I wasn't a youth in the past. Now I'm living my truth, it's crud. Word, trust. I saw her in words. Her, enough. In 98, I was born. Night full uniform. Now it's the and where? Tell a friend till it joins. They call me weird, they call me strange. They call me this, they call me. They call me fake, they call me skinny, they call me fat, they call me, they call me nigga, they call me fuck, they call me white, they call me all the names under the sun, still couldn't touch me, I still get it done. As much as fashion has been non-essential, in many ways it has been an essential lifeline for lots of people. People are going to realise that, you know, you don't have to work in this similar model or show in a certain time in order to be relevant or taken seriously as a brand. I think, I think fashion's such a funny industry because it looks like it moves so fast and it looks like it's so speedy, but it's actually the slowest old boat ever. I'm very optimistic. It, it kind of reminds you that we're all humans. We just have to be very mindful that we don't get back into that same situation again of overproducing, of expecting huge amounts from our designers and our creative directors. In London, we're very lucky that there's this community of designers and the only way that most of us have got through is by working together over this period of time. Because we ask some really important questions, whether it's about the environment or, you know, just that fundamental question of what do we need right now? Creativity is something worth protecting.